Hey guys, what's going on? Shaw here. And today in this video, though it might be a little late, we are going to be taking a look at the Shadow Pan Hero Talent Tree that Blizzard released a couple days ago. At some point, I'm going to get through all of them, but for in this video specifically, we're going to look at the Shadow Pan, mostly focused on the Brewmaster. I will probably point out a lot of the flaws in the tree, especially regarding the other spec, which is for the Windwalker Monk. I think overall, my first impression of this tree is it's good, not great. I think there's a couple of concerns for both Brewmaster and for Windwalker. And honestly, there's like a lot of contention with how some of the health pool modifiers work in conjunction with some of these talents. So we're going to dive into that here in a second. Like I said, though, I do like this tree. I think mostly passive abilities are generally good. While it would be cool to have like another on use, all three uh, monk specs are fairly bloated. And unless we see a rework that reduces that, I am actually fine with passive uh, passive abilities coming into play here. So let's just dive right into this tree. So big disclaimer, of course, this is subject to change. I'm hoping with proper feedback on forums, videos like this from both myself and other content creators, as well as just general discourse, Blizzard may kind of refine the tree, make some changes here and there. Another thing to keep in mind is again, like damage numbers. Anytime you see anything about damage numbers, those can always be adjusted on Blizzard's end. So don't focus on them too much, but let's just get into this. The Monk Shadow Pantry is going to be specifically for Brewmaster and Windwalker Monks. There is a heavy favor to Brewmaster Monks just based on how some of these passives and, and traits work. But starting off, what is our core ability? So the core ability of this tree is called Overwhelming Flurry. The way that this reads currently is dealing damage equal to your maximum health generates a flurry charge. There's already a problem with that just because it's based on max health and I have some questions. Is it your current static health? Is it dependent on if you have Fortifying Brew active, if you have the stand buff from Priests, if you have Rallying Cry from Warriors. There's a lot of different modifiers that can impact health. What happens when you get a health increase from some type of dungeon bonus or a specific mechanic in a raid fight where maybe you have increased health to survive a mechanic for some reason. There can be a lot of issues with this. So I'm really hoping Blizzard changes this instead of from max health to a specific value, or it's based on your current health without any modifiers, because you can definitely get griefed already if your warrior decides to rally and cry on pull. Now you're going to gain flurry charges less um, frequently in that during that duration, and it's going to impact the rest of the tree. So Beyond that, the ability continues to read, for each 400 energy you spend, unleash all flurry charges you have currently accumulated as flurry strikes. This is probably just the name of the ability, how it's going to pop up in logs and details. And this is going to deal physical damage per charge. Now, we don't know the number on that physical charge, if it's going to scale with main stat, if it's going to be fairly static, or if it's going to just be some kind of raw number, basically. But essentially, you want to accumulate more flurry charges... When you eventually spend that 400 energy, you're going to unleash those dealing damage. I'm hoping it's passive and it's not going to be some weird channel because that's going to get kind of interesting. But I think in general, just having free passive damage is fine. Yes, is it boring? Sure, we already have a ton of passives in our kit from things like Rushing Jade Wind, Resonant Fists, etc. But you know what? It's welcome, especially with how bloated it is. So let me jump to the capstone, actually, and then we'll work our way through the tree then, because I think understanding how the capstone works might help kind of dissect the tree. So when we jump to the capstone, we can see that it's called Wisdom of the Wall, which, by the way, I think that's a really cool name. It feels very Pandara-y. It, you know, it reminds me a lot for some reason of Gate of the Setting Sun dungeon, uh, but Wisdom of the Wall just sounds super dope. So how it reads is for every 10 flurry strikes, you become infused with Wisdom of the Wall for 20 seconds. Wisdom of the Wall grants the following effects. Your critical strike deals 30% additional damage. Your mastery effect is increased by 25%. Versatility now also increases your dodge and critical strike chance by 25% of its effect. And Flurry Strikes now deals additional shadow damage to all uncontrolled enemies within six yards. Let me break this down a little bit because there's a lot to unpack here. Now, I'm assuming when you have Wisdom of the Wall, you're gaining all of the effects. This is a massive buff. From my testing, which I'll explain in a little bit, it's probably going to occur roughly every minute in an AoE setting. In single target raid environment, probably less frequently. But again, it really depends on what cooldowns you have, how modifiers work. If trinkets and stuff count, which the way that they nerfed Weapons of Order way back in the day, probably not. It's probably going to just be the actual core kit abilities, but I digress. So your critical strikes will now deal a 30% more damage. This 
just like how Brewmaster has kind of always worked, will definitely put more strain on the Critical Strike stat. And because of some of the other talents I'll get to in a bit, it's really going to make Brewmaster, this Brewmaster tree really become more powerful as the you know season goes on, or not the season, but as the expansion goes on. So in the first season, because of the limited amount of Critical Strike value that we'll be able to gain, it'll probably not feel as strong as it will in maybe the War Within Season 3 or 4, similar to how Brewmaster started off in a really weak state because of secondary stats and primary stat in Season 1 of Dragonflight, and now they feel phenomenal. So on top of your Critical Strikes dealing 30% more damage, your Mastery Effect is now also increased by 25%. I'm assuming this... I don't know if this is going to be a raw 25, like you just... Let's say you have 25% Mastery base like with all of your stats on your gear, is it going to just add an additional 25% bumping you up to 50? Or is it going to be 25% of that 25% meaning you're going to get what like a 7% increase? Not sure. We're going to have to test it to see what they mean exactly on that. Versatility now also increases your dodge and critical strike chance by 25% of its effect. This reads pretty straightforward. I'm assuming let's say you have uh, 30. It's kind of how do I math this easy? Let's say you have 20% versatility. You're going to then gain 5% dodge and 5% critical strike chance because you have 20% verse. So you're going to 25% of 20% is 5%. So that that's how I'm assuming that's going to work. Seems pretty low. And again, it's going to really push the brewmaster back into the critical strike and versatility. And because Wisdom of the Wall is granting you mastery, assuming it's going to give you a bulk 25%, mastery is probably going to be a little less important, I would imagine. But again, testing is going to have to see. We're going to have to see on actual numbers and how it actually interacts with the class. And lastly, this one kind of has me a little confused because it's, it's not actually super confusing, but it, at the same time it is. So flurry strikes will now deal additional shadow damage to all uncontrolled enemies within six yards. So first off, I'm assuming uncontrolled enemies means literally just any mobs that aren't currently crowd controlled because if they're uncontrolled then that means they're just hitting you freely now i can obviously see issues with this like what happens if you need to stop an enemy when you act when you go into your flurry strike let's say you expend your energy at, to, at 400 and you start dealing a bunch of damage with this and then all of a sudden like you leg sweep or let's say your shaman drops a static charge totem or a warrior shockwaves or whatever it might be like you can get griefed on your own damage based on how your your teammates are interacting like with the dungeon and it's silly because in mythic plus there's obviously a huge emphasis on control and you're now going to deal more damage when they're not controlled but now you're going to lose out on that damage when they are controlled. So it kind of like works against itself, which just seems kind of strange. Like, I don't know, not not a huge fan of how this interacts. I think it should just deal shadow damage. I don't think it should be based on if they're controlled or uncontrolled. Now, of course, in a boss fight, in a raid encounter, you're always going to benefit from the shadow damage. But in a mythic plus, you're going to lose out on damage, both from gaining flurry charges because of max health. Um, and then on top of that, like if a mob is controlled in CC, then it's not going to do damage. Now, I might be wrong. Let me know in the comments below if you might have insight on this. I would assume, though, it's just if they're not CC'd. Okay, so basically the general idea of this tree is build flurry charges by every time you basically hit your maximum health in the amount of damage you can deal, and um, you'll gain a stack. And then every 400 energy you spend, you'll unleash those flurry charges. Pretty straightforward. I think this is fine. Again, passive is great. So let's work through the tree and then I'll talk about kind of my the reason why I think you can really pick this tree apart. So first, we do have a choice node, Pride of Pandaria or High Impact. Now, High Impact feels a little strange um, personally because enemies who die within five seconds of being damaged by a flurry strike explode dealing damage to uncontrolled enemies within eight yards. This seems fine in Mythic Plus and we don't know the damage scaling on this ability the the explosion damage could be really good it could be really bad it almost seems like a second touch of death uh and i don't know how i feel about that from my experience so far like it does take a little bit of time spending 400 energy so mobs could get like they'll get hit by a flurry strike and then like you're in that weird gap window where you're building flurry strike charges but you haven't spent enough energy and then they die and then this is a wasted node so there's some problems there now Prada pandari is the other choice flurry strikes have an additional 15 percent chance to critically strike that's fine. Just you probably are going to always pick into Pride of Pandaria just based on the the inconsistency of high impact. But again, we'll have to see. I'd like to see this reworked in some kind of way because right now it just doesn't seem that great. Uh, shifting over, we have Veteran's Eye. Striking the same target 
five times within two seconds grants 2% haste. Multiple instances of this effect may overlap, stacking up to 10 times. Now, it doesn't say how frequently or how long this will last for, because it's saying multiple instances of this may overlap, I would imagine that there might be a duration, but it doesn't say here. Now, if it doesn't, you're gonna essentially get 20% haste. Like you can stack it up to 20% haste and then maintain that if it's like more of a permanent buff. So multiple instances may overlap. Typically when you see this, you see this thing like with things like Iron Fur or Sigil, where like the duration of the abilities have like their own independent duration. And while Iron Fur can stack, you use Iron Fur, it lasts for what, eight seconds or whatever. And then you use the second one five seconds later, you're gonna have two stacks of Iron Fur for three seconds, and then you'll go back down to one. So the way I'm reading this is essentially you're only gonna have anywhere between like four and 10% haste at all times, because like you're typically not gonna, I have to keep in mind, like there are probably gonna be some smaller pulls, you're gonna be on some bosses. Now in big pulls, you're gonna probably be able to maintain closer to 20% haste. And while striking an enemy five times seems within two seconds seems kind of hard to do like, but Brewmaster has Rushing Jade Wind, Resonant Fists, Breath of Fire Dots, I'm assuming that's gonna count, uh, Spinning Crane Kick, Exploding Kick, like you have a lot of things that can happen in a very short window that is going to allow you to maintain this haste pretty frequently. So Veteran's Eye, it is fine. It's gonna be interesting to see how it might interact and how the stacks are gonna work in the duration, but overall I'm fine with this. What is nice about this is it will reduce the need or the dependence on high tolerance maybe early on. The high tolerance benefit is the increased stagger effectiveness, which is good. But the haste is also nice because maintaining a short, a little bit of haste allows you to have a more fluid rotation, your energy regions a little bit better, and generally like your rotation will feel a little bit more fluid. Next over, we have Martial Precision. Attacks penetrate 10% of your target's armor. This isn't necessarily a 10% damage increase. It's going, it really depends on the mob the, the mob type you're hitting and the armor value of that mob type, we're really going to have to play with this and lo and really have to analyze logs to really get a good number on how much this is going to increase. But it is going to be passive damage increase, so I'm I'm fine with that. Moving down, um, we have the Protect and Serve Choice node, which is competing with Lead from the Front. So Protect and Serve, your Vivify always heals you for an additional 30% of its value, so it's a flat 30% Vivify on yourself. This can be really good with your like improved vivify talents in your talent tree. Now, I don't know if Blizzard's gonna redo those at all in the near future, but find synergy. You can take like the free, the one that's like free, and this will actually be a little bit better, though it still has an energy cost. So there's that aspect of it. And then you have lead from the front. So Chi Burst, Chi Wave, and Expel Harm now leech for 20% of the damage they dealt. This is fine. Chi Wave is more of like a filler. I tip like personally, I use it to like pull mobs that are far away. I use it in that very strange gap in your rotation where you have like everything's on cooldown and you don't want to spend too much energy because you need to keg smash soon. But Expel Harm is used pretty frequently, but again, the leech, like Expel Harm's damage is not, that's that's so insignificant. This is a really bad node in my opinion. This might be a little bit better for Windwalker. Overall, like I think you're always just gonna play Protect and Serve and like not really even think about it. I would like to see like Protect and, and Serve be more of like when you Vivify yourself, you have a damage reduction of like a 10% damage reduction for a, a couple of seconds. Now again, Monks are extremely tanky, especially in Raid, both Windwalker and Brewmaster, so it wouldn't be that useful. But again, I, I just think this node is really, really weak defensively. Then we have one versus many. And this is where the, the Windwalker flaws really start to shine in in this tree. And while I am focused on Brewmaster, I do play Windwalker and I feel for Windwalkers uh, in terms of like when you look at this tree as a Windwalker main, you're probably pretty pissed. So one versus many reads, damage dealt by Fist of Fury and Keg Smash counts as double towards Flurry Charge Generation. This is good because when you come back to like the max health issue, and you're like, oh man, okay, as a Brewmaster, currently I have 1.2 million health or 1.3 million health, depending on your gear. Probably more people have less than that because I'm my Brewmaster is extremely geared. But nonetheless, I have to do 1.2 million damage to generate one charge, which means I need to do 12 million damage to get to the 10 charge to have, to have Wisdom of the Wall proc. So when you look at one versus many, the damage done now is going to count double. So if you do a 200, let's say you hit five targets for 150k, you're it's now going to count 300k, right, towards your max health. That's how I'm assuming this reads, uh, especially when you uh, take into account the very first ability, which is the overwhelming. So Fist of Fury damage increased by 10. We don't really care too much about that because, well, we're not looking at Windwalker right now. Keg Smash deal uh, damage increased by 30%. That's really good. From some of my testing, very little testing. Uh, <laughs> 
I hit some training dummies with Keg Smash. Average Keg Smash currently at level 70 uh, is doing about 100 and anywhere between 150 to 200k damage, depending on crits. So a 30% increase on that is fine, right? You're getting a 30% increase, and now it's going to be doubled towards your over your your flurry charges. Keg Smashing is going to be the most efficient way to really build that up. That's fine. We all probably knew that. And our last choice node in the tree is Whirling Steel versus Predictive Training. So this is a really good defensive node, and I'm going to be interested to see if there's any kind of diminishing return on this or like limits on the proc because they're both really good. Whirling Steel reads when you become injured, which again, we don't know what become injured means. Does that mean you drop below a certain percentage or is it whenever you take damage? Because if it's whenever you take damage, you're basically going to gain an increased parry chance and avoidance by 15% for six seconds. That's insanely high. Now, if it means when you become injured as in you drop below 50% health, this is going to be a lot less great. It might be better for Windwalker in raid situations or Mythic Plus. For high-end keys, Brewmaster might like this, but I don't think parry chance and avoidance is necessarily going to keep you alive. And then you shift over to predictive training. Whenever you dodge or parry an attack, reduce damage taken by 10% for 6 seconds. Now, this is what I always wanted Generous Spore to be, or not Generous Spore, Bounce Back. You dodge pretty frequently. The way I would see this, unless there's some kind of diminishing return or like internal cooldown on when this can proc, you're almost going to gain a flat 10% DR as a Brewmaster playing this talent. So as of right now, I think Predictive Training will be the play. But again, Whirling Steel, if it's whenever you take damage as well, though I feel like they would just say it in there, you're probably going to play Predictive Training. All right, the last row. There's against all odds. This means, th this reads, Flurry Strikes increase your agility by 1% for 6 seconds, stacking up to 20 times. This reads really weird to me because you proc Flurry Strikes by spending 400 energy. And it lasts for six seconds. I can't really think of a, a scenario. Maybe maybe for Windwalkers, this might be more true just because of energy spending. But I can't imagine a time as a Brewmaster where you're going to really gain even close to 20 stacks. Most of your abilities spend energy unlike Windwalker, which is, um, that's starting to lead into the issue with this tree. So Keg Smash costs 40 energy. A lot of your abilities cost energy as Brewmaster, and they're in your rotation, and you're hitting them fairly consistently. Which means that you're gonna you're gonna expend your strikes also pretty frequently. Which means, and it's only gonna last for six seconds. So I can only imagine us gaining like maybe upwards of five percent agility for five seconds or six seconds after, like every couple, you know, every time we spend four hundred energy. Uh, not a fan of this. I think they need to rework a bit again. I want to test it before I actually like get too critical of this. Next, we have Efficient Training. This one's actually pretty cool, but I don't like how it's going to force us to play Weapon of Order, but abilities that spend energy deal an additional 15% damage. So another 15% on top of Keg Smash and Spinning Crane Kick. Awesome. Every 50 energy you spend reduces Storm Earth Fire, Serenity, and Weapons of Order by one second. This most likely means we're going to be forced to play Weapons of Order, which I've personally don't like weapons of order for a couple of reasons first it's button bloat uh, i also don't like the two minute cooldown if i'm being honest i like to have shorter cooldowns that's why i really like things like exploding keg bone dust brew etc but with the uh cooldown reduction we're probably going to get weapons of order anywhere around the one minute 30 mark maybe even the one minute 20 and if you're playing something like Chi Surge, you're probably going to get it even lower because you're going to reduce the cooldown every time you use it if you're hitting multiple enemies. Seeing Weapons of Order all of a sudden become like a minute, a minute 10 cooldown, probably pretty cool. It's going to feel really good getting that a lot shorter because you're going to have way higher uptime on the damage increase and the mastery that's coming from that, which then goes back into what I was saying earlier about Critical Strike and Versatility being the primary set because you're gaining mastery from all these extra sources, Wisdom of the Wall, and from your Weapons of Order. But again, CDR is always great. Honestly, that's how the whole class works in general, right? All of your brews are reduced whenever you um, expend charges of uh, your your keg smash. And of course, with blackout combo, you're gaining additional cool introduction if you're opting into the blackout into keg smash. And then lastly, we have Vigilant Watch. Blackout Kick deals an additional 20% critical damage and increase the damage of your next set of flurry strikes by 10%. Now, I'm assuming this is going to be more of a permanent buff at some point when you do blackout kick your next flurry strikes will deal 10% more damage. That's great. Now, if it's one of those weird things where it only lasts for a few seconds, that's going to suck because that means you're going to have to blackout kick before you spend the energy to expend your strikes, which means you're going to have to get a weak or to track it if you're going to try to optimize it. Now, if you don't care about that little extra 10% damage on flurry strikes, you won't worry about it. But if flurry strikes hits hard enough, 
it's going to determine what a good brewmaster looks like versus a bad brewmaster. The extra critical damage is fine. It's going to count towards flurry strikes, of course, which is great. But again, exemplifies why critical strike is going to be probably the better stat. Really quick, I see there's a ton of issues with the streak, obviously. There is the the health modifiers that are relatively concerning for the brewmaster. Let's let's just take a look here. So I'm logged into game and we have oops, let me open my spellbook instead. So we have a couple of abilities that do cost energy, right? So we have things like crackling to lightning, probably not using that much. You have things like expel harm. It's a very small amount of energy, but it does have an energy cost. Spinning crane kick, you have 25 energy here. And then you have Keg Smash, which is in the Brewmaster tree here, which spends 40 energy. With that being said, it's going to take you basically every other global you're spending energy. Now, if you compare that to things like Windwalker, the only thing you're really doing on Windwalker that's doing energy is Tiger Palm. Now, there is the occasional expel harm to gain a you know Chi, but Chi is your primary resource as a Windwalker monk. So when you come back and you look at the, the the hero talents you're going to be gaining way more flurry stacks as a wind walker before you're able to kind of expel them onto your your target which can be a good or a bad thing because you obviously kind of want it to line up with your cooldowns but then you think about that and you're like okay so the first time when you enter a raid fight you're not going to be getting that much damage which is a big problem also you want to accumulate charges as quickly as possible you want to constantly be dealing as much like at you want to deal your full health pool to gain that charge. And again, if someone griefs you by power word fortitude for stamina, you have rallying cry as a raid uh, defensive. Someone could just grief you on pull with that. You also have things like your own defensive cooldown, which isn't that great, but fortifying brew increases your max health, which then all of a sudden makes it so you're generating less charges if it's based off of your dynamic max health during you know combat. So there's a lot of problems there. Spending 400 energy is already more difficult to do for Windwalker. Again, striking the same enemy is pretty difficult to do if you're not like a Windwalker. Like, yeah, you have Fist of Fury and you have Spinning Crane Kick, but you're often not using those as frequently as something like a Brewmaster might. So this tree just feels very heavily favored towards Brewmaster. This is one of those trees that I think is going to be considered pretty like mid compared to some of these other trees that have a little bit more class fantasy to it. I was hoping Shadow Pen was going to deal a little bit more with like some type of clones, spawning clones of yourself, a little bit more shadow damage of sorts. But we kind of got this kind of lackluster weapons of order, cooldown reduction, and random damage, which we already have a ton of from Rushing Jade Wind and Resonant Fists, and a bunch of other damage sources that when you start to break it down, you're like, I don't even know what half of these things do. So I'm not... I like I like the tree for Brewmaster specifically and specifically for Mythic Plus, but there's already issues when you get into a raid environment, when you play the Windwalker spec. I think it's a little bit too limiting to just the Brewmaster. And I know I feel like I'm beating a dead horse at this point. Overall, I think Wisdom of the Wall is cool. I think the accumulation of flurry strikes might be a little bit slow. Obviously, there's a big issue between the specs. The defensive choice nodes are pretty shit. But uh I'm still somehow kind of excited for it, but it's really going to come down to testing. Anyways, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.